This is Conversations with the Candidates. I'm Thor Jurgensen, City Editor of The Daily Item. Our guest is Peter Capano, Ward 6 City Councilor. Welcome, Pete. Thank you for having me on, Thor. You're welcome. Tell us about yourself, your background, and of course, um, how long you've been on the City Council. Okay. Uh, my name is Pete Capano. I I uh, live on Alley Street in Lynn. I grew up in West Lynn, uh, married to Michelle. Um, I have two children, Stephen and Dina. Stephen's 21, Dina's 30. Uh, we all went to Lynn Public Schools. I graduated from Lynn Classical. Uh, I, went, I got a degree at UMass Boston in labor relations. Uh, I'm a U.S. Army veteran. Uh, I served three years overseas uh, in the late 70s. Um, Delegate to the North Shore Labor Council, I'm president of uh, IUE Local 201, representing workers at GE, uh, Avis Budget, Logan Airport, uh, Sargas Librarians, and uh, Viola Wastewater. Um, yeah, so I grew up in Lynn, and um, you know my passion is uh, West Lynn. I'm a, I'm a council from West Lynn. I'd like to see uh, some improvements there, and working towards that. And um, I'm also a member of many boards. You know. Various amount of boards uh, in the city to try to stay active as a counselor and um, as a citizen, also. Pete, how long have you been on the city council? How long have you been on water and sewer? Which is you, you have a unique role in that you sit on, yes. on two major city boards that make million, multi million dollar decisions. Yeah, so I've been a city councilor for 10 years now. <laughs> it's went by pretty quick. And i um, been on the water and sewer commission for a year, around a year. Uh, Summarize for the voters, Pete, uh, what you consider your accomplishments. Okay, so, um, you know, I think, you know, the accomplishments, you know, it's hard to, to really say which is the biggest accomplishment. You know, one, one thing I like to uh, consider as an accomplishment is the ability to develop relationships with people in the different neighborhoods. It's very diverse ward and I seem to have like a, a, a representative from each area, you know, that that can help me out, sort of a mayor of every street and uh, we're able to work that way through through the neighborhoods. I, I consider that an accomplishment. You know, um, you know, nuts and bolts accomplishments. Um, I think um, that when I took over as council, there was a lot of empty buildings in, in, this, uh, in the ward. Uh, we had the Nissan Bakery, uh, rat infested place uh, on the Linway, uh, the old Lynn Ladder building, you know, and those are both uh, you know, filled now. Uh, Price Right, a uh, little mall there, one way mall, and um, CVS on the Commons. And, uh, you know, business in, in Ward 6 is booming. You don't hear about it a lot. We got, uh, I know we focus on the downtown restaurants, which we should and which I support, but there's also uh, newer restaurants in Westland, too, well, like Bruno's, Bruno's uh, Burgers on Western Ave just opened up uh, a short time ago. Great place to eat, Hacienda Corona, Mexican restaurant on the Linway, uh, is a great spot. And um, you know the Lynn, Lynn Lumber Building now is uh, completely done over. With uh, we have a microbrewery going on uh, in there. You know other accomplishments that I like to see is as uh, opening up things like opening up Lynn Tech at night, working with the school committee and other council members and members of. Um, the community to uh, open up Lynn Tech at night. As you know, uh, we have a machinist program that we run uh, through the local with the idea uh, that what I would like to see is uh, the school opened up at night, all the shops, uh, for Lynn residents to learn skills so they can get living wage jobs with benefits and a career path at some point. So I, I, I like the idea of tying uh, that sort of thing I know it's right now the people looking for the food pantry, which they should be. You know, I know there's a vacancy there and people are looking for a spot, and I think we should try to help them if we can. But I try to think of it uh, in other ways also. I mean, if people have a job, we'll have less people going to the food pantry, and I think we need to make that connect connection. Uh, I think one of the accomplishments was uh, the waterfront uh, zoning plan, you know. Um, you know, it, working on that, moving the power lines, you know, it's too bad we had the, the economic collapse, you know, a few few years ago. 
now things are starting to pick up again. But when we talk about economic development, we should include workforce development. So opening, doing things like job training, using Lynn Tech, and that, that connects people that actually live here now. So a lot of the things we do is try, we're doing now, you know, with the waterfront and the downtown, is trying to attract people from other places, but we need to keep in mind that we have people that live here now that need some help. And job training, I think, is very key to that. It, it, it eliminates the amount of people that are on assistance and increases the tax base and gives people the skills they need so they can have a good quality of life. And that's, those are some of the things that come off the top of my head. I think the foreclosure ordinance, you know, was controversial in the city, but I was really uh, proud for the amount of time that wa it was in effect. We were able to save 120 Lynn families from losing their homes and uh, kept some neighborhoods uh, with uh, people in their homes so you didn't, we had less vacant buildings and uh, we were able to help people that way. So uh, those are the things that just come off the top of my head, I, you know. What's the biggest issue facing the city of Lynn? So, um, as you know, I mean, there's a drug problem, there's a heroin problem, that, that's a big problem, but um, also what I would have said if I just was st just didn't talk about it is the issue of jobs. Uh, a lot of these problems, uh, homelessness, uh, drug addiction, come uh, as related to the lack of good jobs, you know. The, the, the better off people are doing, the more families stay together and the less of those types of problems you have. So, um, you know, I, I would, right now on the North Shore, there are employers that are looking for skilled help. I mean, we're focusing a lot of attention, which is okay, and I, I support uh, the idea of testing uh, in the schools where kids are uh, more prepared for college. And um, my son just graduated from college, and I think that's a good thing to do, but there, there, there's, there's, there's no plumbers looking for, <laughs> looking for work. They're all doing fine. If we could, uh, you know, match the needs of employers for welders, uh, tradespeople, machinists, with, the, with Lynn, the a place where there is unskilled labor. They need the skilled help, we have unskilled labor. If we can train people for good jobs in the types of neighborhoods, especially uh, surrounding the school uh, at Lynn Tech, we will be performing a service. It may be immeasurable in terms of when you look at statistics, statistics and what you are doing and you want to add it up, but those types of things, when people get out of a program like the ET Machinist Training Program, they have a job, it changes their whole life. They're able to get a car, get an apartment, save for a house, and it helps a lot of the other problems that, that we see around the city with homelessness, uh, drug addiction, uh, families breaking up, uh, you know, so, um, you know, I forget the question you asked. <laughs> What's the biggest issue facing yeah, the city? I, I think yeah. that that is a big problem. The yeah. other thing is when you when you train people, that, that also attracts employers. You know, naturally, we need uh, employers and developers to come uh, to certain parts of when and we need the tax revenue and tax getting commercial tax revenue is key to. Uh, uh, a lot of things we do uh, for you know for the services we provide in the city, like DPW, police, and fire, et cetera. You know, so you know, I, I think the whole idea of uh, thinking of not in, just in terms of economic development, but workforce development as a part of that, and the issue of the lack of good-paying jobs, um, I think, is a, a big issue in the city. You know, as a city councilor, veteran councilor. What can you do to make job training a uh, priority and to get programs launched and underway or expand programs existing now? Right now we have uh, we've had meetings. We have sort of an ad hoc board um, that we've been working on for two or three years uh, with the superintendent. Uh, we have support of the mayor. Uh, some of the counselors and school committee people are on board. We're actually opening, we hired a director actually to run a training program at Lynn Tech at night starting within the next couple months. I forget the exact date. You know, hopefully we'll have training programs there for um, um, 
uh, some we'll be able to use some of these shops that are in the school to provide training for people you know we've lobbied from the state the state delegation has been great providing funding for some of this training and we've been working with fund you know trying to find more funding sources but um, as a counselor what I what I've tried to do is try to put all the pieces together and by the way the, the new principal at Lynn Tech is terrific uh, they're starting a new HVAC program next year, which is a job that is in demand and also gives people all types of skills, electrical, plumbing, um, uh, and air conditioning and heating type skills. We need to be thinking in terms of those types of jobs, not just the, the college jobs. You know, you know some, not everybody is... Uh, you know, not everybody's going to go to college, but uh, having said that, you can still go through a trade school and still go to uh, continue with your education after that. But uh, just to, when we have a, a, a school like that in the city, we should be using it uh, more. And I think we've begun to do that. So as a counselor, I've tried to put uh, a, a team together. I mean, you know, you know, they don't want me running it. <laughs> we'll have a run right. But I try to put the people together that can make it work. And uh, like I said, uh, there's school committee people on there, the superintendent, uh, director, um, there's reps from the Workforce Investment Board, and hopefully this this will work and have the same type of success the E-Team program had. What's the first um, uh, concrete action or result we'll see from this team you've helped assemble? Um, the class will begin. I, I don't have the date. I think it's no, in November. Okay. You know, so that that would. That would be if we can get this open and running on time and first classes and people from Lynn, you know, from the neighborhoods that could benefit from it signed up, I think that would be a really big accomplishment. Why should someone vote for you? Well, I'm the only name on the ballot. <laughs> so True. Um, I don't have any opposition. But I, I would say this. Um, you know, I, I work hard. I've, I've, I've been an activist before I was a counselor. If I did have opposition and I lost, I still would be involved. I love this city. I love the area I represent. I love the people there. And um, I'll always give it 110%. And I'll always do my best to try and represent the issues concerning residents of Ward 6. Thank you. This has been a conversation with Ward 6 City Councilor Peter Capano, whose name is on the November 3rd ballot. I'm Thora Jurgensen, city editor of the item. For more election coverage, please read the daily item and itemlive.com. Thank you, Pete. Always a pleasure. My pleasure.